Brandon Ayuk has been anointed as the 49ers wide receiver one. And we hear a lot of the talk in the offseason, and I feel like this is every year, every offseason, where it's like, Brandon Ayuk's killing everybody that can't cover him. And every year he comes into the season, and the 49ers don't emphasize Brandon Ayuk in the passing game. So this year I'm like, okay, it, you know, are they going to emphasize him? Is he still going to be the fourth option, which he said last year himself, like, man, I went over 1,000 yards as the fourth option. Like, is he still going to be the fourth option in the passing game? And when we say fourth option, we're talking about Debo Samuel. We're talking about George Kittle. We're talking about Christian McCaffrey. And then <laughs> we're talking about Brandon Ayuk. Is he still going to be the fourth option for the Niners? And watching watching this game, I don't know if it was just like, look, we're going to start to draw and scheme these things up for Ayuk. But it definitely felt like there was more emphasis on getting in the ball. And even then, eight targets. I don't want to be greedy. I don't want to say that, you know. But, like, the big don't I feel like they even get more than eight targets. But we're going to take that. All right, we're going to take that. 49 probably didn't throw the ball a whole lot. Um, I don't know how many passes uh, Purdy attempted. What, 28, maybe 29. So, okay, eight. All right, that's damn near a third of, of the passes that went to IU. Cool. Uh, but. I'll tell you what I was impressed with. I always check things off, right? Especially as it pertains to Ayuk and being a true wide receiver one. We look around the league and and there are guys that when you say he's a wide receiver one, it's like he gives me everything. He gives me route. He gives me separation, maybe, right? Like he just wins how he wins and does it consistently at a very high level. Uh, For Ayuk, the last trait I was waiting on was like contested catch. Because that was not a thing of his at Arizona State. You know, now what? I watched this film at Arizona State. You look at the analytics and the numbers, like his contested catch rate was extremely low. That wasn't his game. Run after catch, terrific. Uh, you know, ability to, you know, separate, terrific. I loved how they moved him around. I feel like the 49ers even still can do more of that, right? And when I say move him around, it's like motion him, get him in, like, you know, guys that have to be off coverage, et cetera. He can do those things, but contested catch like that was the that was the uh you know like if this is in game and you know he's collect co- uh collecting all the uh just the infinity stones that was the last infinity stone that he needed to collect it was contested catch ability and it was amazing to see him make that contested catch on Patrick Peterson because he had those opportunities in the past and I feel like some of them are tough right of course it's going to be tough like there's a guy all over you but he just never came down with it it's like, that's the thing. Like, you know, when we talk about kind of separating him from the other guys, like, what, what is that? It's, it's that contested catchability. He can get open. He can catch the ball. He can do all those things. But can he be the guy that I'm going to catch it even when I'm not open? And first of all, shout out to Brad Purdy for throwing the back shoulder pass. I don't know when's the last time I saw the 49ers quarterback throw a back shoulder <laughs> throw. And maybe they have thrown it, but at least complete it. Which, <sighs> when? I don't know. I don't know when's the last time I saw them throw a back shoulder throw. So first of all, that part of it was amazing. Second of all, his ability to adjust and really catch the ball with Patrick Peterson plastered to him, right? So that was amazing. I felt like he won every which way he could for the 49ers, all right? So he won with routes. We saw that, right? First touchdown just broke off Patrick Peterson in the end zone. First of all, Patrick Peterson... And I know he talked about the tails and all that type of stuff. We'll get to that. Patrick Peterson, he's a veteran. And I saw my guy, uh, DK, on Twitter, and he's like, what's the number one rule here for DBs? And I'm like, you can't back into the end zone. So Patrick Peterson backs into the end zone. You have to make contact around the goal line. Do you all remember a uh, preseason game? It must have been the last one. And Brock Purdy threw a fade to Brandon Nayu. Right. So do y'all remember that? It was like on the left side. He threw a fade and there was like no separation. Well, I thought the DB played it extremely well. Stayed right there around the one yard line uh, from off coverage, hung in there, made contact, and then just went with Ayuk on the fade. It was trapped. Right. Like that's how you ideally want to play. Patrick Peterson, you are you are a, a vet. <laughs> All right. You're the vet. You're you're the guy that is supposed to know I can't back into the end zone. Eric Crocker knows it, and, you know, I was barely an NFL player. But he kind of gave that space and made it to where Ayuk was able to give him a move, and Ayuk broke him off. Mm-mm. Gave him that, mm-mm. All right. And I bet when Ayuk gave it to him, I bet he 
pause. I bet he probably was like, <clears throat> like stupid, broke him off. You see Pat P fall and just wide open in the end zone. I right, shout out to Purdy for seeing it. So that was awesome. He won with contested catches. He won with routes and he won with scheme, which we know Kyle Shanahan is going to do that. So great day for IU, you know, eight receptions over 125 yards or whatever it was. It was terrific. Um, I thought he won in all phases. And as we start to kind of look at him with the 49ers, like, is that going to be consistent? Because one thing we have seen with the Niners is you, you'll see him catch eight for 120 something. And then the next game is like, he only gets two, two targets, right? Like, like who was the odd man out this game? It was George Kittle. So like against the Rams is, is I going to be the odd man out? Or is this going to be a thing where it's like, now nah, we're going to continue to make sure that we emphasize getting the ball in the Brandon Ayu's hands cons consistently. And, and if they do that, I'm all for it. I love it. Um, I clearly think he has that ability. I've talked about how I feel like on another team, he's a 13, 1400 yard receiver, but clearly if he continues to <laughs> have these type of games for 49ers, he'll do it here. Then you're talking about a whole different problem, a good problem for the 49ers, but now we got to pay him. And if he is a 13, 1400 yard receiver, that's going to be another guy that you have to pay top of the market money to. And, uh, how are they going to do that? I, I don't know, but maybe with some of that cap space, they've been cl clearing up. They can do it that way. Or there might be a casualty, maybe an Eric Armstead, which I think uh, with the run game, I was a little like, eh, sketch the run defense. And they were like, no, nah, you got nothing to worry about. They, they stuffed the run. So that was terrific. Uh, I think they gave up like one carry that was like 20 yards. But outside of that, uh, they were terrific against the run. Something that after preseason is like, is it going to be an issue? It wasn't an issue. It wasn't an issue. So anyways, shout out to Brandon Ayuk. Uh, now, keep that going. Like, I think the numbers, like for Brock Purdy, like, those won't fluctuate too much. Like, it's that's going to be around the same. The usage of each guy, and whether it's Debo, Ayuk, Kittle, McCaffrey, that's the thing that will kind of change. Unless they're just like, we're always going to emphasize Ayuk, as they should. And then everybody else, like, y'all get what's left over, which would still be a decent amount for somebody, but there will likely be an odd man out each time.